A reused Apple ID could be bad for your privacy, 3 million Android devices are vulnerable to hacks, and you can steal cookies from a locked PC with a super cheap device. Coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for Tuesday, November 22nd, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Good news for patrons over at patreon.com slash threatwire. We are now offering an exclusive Patreon-only audio feed of ThreatWire, and you can copy our RSS link into your favorite podcasting app to listen to our show offline. So you can listen to it on your commute and you don't have to worry about your data. You fund the making of the show, so thank you. This is a gift to our patrons for letting us bring you security news every single week. Our first story is all about Apple. If you own two iPhones and you're using the same Apple ID for both of those, yeah, chances are that your call history is being stored in the iCloud without your knowledge for up to four months. In a recent report by forensic toolmaker Elcomsoft, people that called you when they called, durations of calls, missed or rejected calls, and a history of such are stored in a user's iCloud account if they use two or more iPhones on the same Apple ID and they are set up to sync to the Apple iCloud. This information isn't easily obtained by the user themselves, but they can be extracted by police, by Apple, or a third party that gets your Apple ID and the password, and they have the capability and tools to extract data, which, to be honest, are pretty easy to come by. If you use two-factor authentication, haha, you would think that you would be safe, but that could also be bypassed by extracting the iCloud authentication token. To fix this problem, Apple recommends not using the same Apple ID for more than one device or disabling iCloud syncing completely. But in some cases, like if you want to sync your photos, your calendar, and your app, that's not necessarily a really good fix. If you do have a family with iPhones and they're all on the same ID, Apple also recommends just not using the same Apple ID and recommends turning on family sharing. But if you own one for work and then another one for personal use, this may not be a very good answer either. Hmm. Unencrypted updates! They are definitely not a good idea, especially when they can open up your Android device to man-in-the-middle attacks from a third-party attacker. Researchers at Anubis Networks discovered last week that over-the-air updates on about 3 million Android devices are completely unencrypted, and they could allow for just this kind of attack to happen. The Chinese firm Regen Tech or Regen Tech Group created the over-the-air implementation used in these devices, and it works similar similarly to a rootkit. An attacker could gain root privileges on your phone and then run fatal commands to take control over the device. Vendors for the phones have been alerted to the problem, but many of these are inexpensive phones sold at retailers like Best Buy. So if a family member uses a phone from Blue Studio, Infinix, Doogie, or Ligu, they may want to be careful with updates. Other than Blue, none of the other manufacturers have fixed the issue at the time of recording. In a similar hack to the one that we reported on a few months ago, Sammy Kamkar has created a device called Poison Tap that can allow an attacker to install a persistent backdoor onto a computer. And all that computer needs is to have an open browser window running in the background or on the forefront, obviously. Poison Tap runs on a Raspberry Pi Zero. It's a cute little $5 device, and the code is freely available on Camcar's site. And it works by tricking a computer into giving it a new Ethernet connection, and it steals HTTP requests from a browser session. This includes cookies from open sessions, which allows an attacker to hijack accounts that also have two-factor authentication turned on. To protect yourself, you can hibernate, or you can turn off your computer when you're leaving it. You can close all of your browsers, you can clear a browser cache, and disable your USB port, or you can use an application that allows for full disk encryption and deep sleep mode. Or you can just stick glue inside your USB ports so that you never have to worry about USB hacks again. But I don't necessarily recommend that last one, so don't yell at me if you stick glue in your computer. Thank you again to all you fine people for being patrons of ThreatWire. You can contribute over at patreon.com slash threatwire to get your name on threatwire.net, as well as your own fur baby in the show. And not only that, but you will also get access to that Patreon-only audio RSS feed. Of course, if you can't contribute, you can give the show a thumbs up and you can subscribe on youtube.com slash hack5. There's a little subscribe button down below and there will also be one right after I talk. 
Now let's see if we can get our channel up to 280,000 subscribers. I would love for that to be my next goal. And you can find all of our episodes, you can find links to our social networks and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.